and uh, we'll start our class with prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the joy, Lord, of building relationships, connecting, Father, to be able to minister through the gifts and the callings that you've given to us. I pray today for your wisdom. I pray today for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, last week we uh, kind of had an introduction and we went around, and three of you showed up in my sermon last week. Yeah. So, thank you. Uh, you see, you so inspired me. I carried it over into the sanctuary, and, uh, and I know it was a blessing to others. And so, Brother Gary, we stopped with you last week. You didn't get to, to share with us. And so if you would, just 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 share a few minutes off of your... Tell us how you... Yeah, well, just tell us what the Lord did in your life. Well, uh, uh, like most of you talked about, uh, you, you came from a background of other than Pentecostal. <coughs> and I come from a Baptist church. And not only I come from a Baptist church, my dad was a Baptist minister. Wow. So for me to make the transition from the Baptist to the Pentecostal was, was Bala's fault, my wife. <laughs> uh, we started dating in high school, and she'd go to church with me. Well, she said, well, don't you think it's time for you to start going to church with me? With her once in a while. And we went to start going to the Pentecostal church there in West Nashville. Well, I moved to Winston-Salem, uh, went in the service, came back to Vietnam. Well, that time her mother had been attending a new church with Wayne Carlisle uh, is a mission for the Church of God. I had been in church a year. I'd been in Vietnam for a year, and the chaplains over there weren't exactly uh, holy rollers. They were rollers, but not holy. But uh, I went to uh, start going to church with them. They had just started the mission, and I ended up at Royal Hall for, for 1970 to 1991. That's 21 years at Royal Hall. Uh, loved working in the church. I was everything from a Sunday school teacher to the janitor, uh, cut grass, Sunday school superintendent, anything that needed to be done, we just fell in and did it. I left there and went to First Assembly in Winston-Salem. Uh, he knows the pastor there, Ron McManus. Yes. Uh, I was under Ron McManus for about 18 years, and then he left and he brought in transition of others and it got much too liberal when you can go out in, in your short shorts and your tank top in the lobby and get coffee and lattes and blueberry muffins and come in and sit down in the sanctuary while preaching's going on. That's too liberal for me. So I went back to Rural <laughs> Hall. So I stayed at Rural Hall until I moved down here. So from 19, probably 1970, to present, I've been in a Pentecostal church. And wouldn't change it for the world. Yes. I appreciate it, Brother Brooks. And that. Now, now your daughter was really pushing to get back here this yes, morning. And if it hadn't been for raining and the bad weather up there, they would have been back. They were going to leave last night. They yeah. drove all the way to Marion. We're going to drive back to Winston and pick her up and come back down. And it was just raining too hard for them to be on the road. I'll just say, you know, your dad made it. Well, I didn't go. Oh, you did. Oh, no wonder you did. No wonder you made it. You didn't. You didn't go. They said, "Are you sure you don't want to go?" I said, "I've got a choice of staying here, going fishing, or going to a wedding shower." Now, which one do you think I'm going to do? Stay here with fishing. <laughs> well, I'm glad you got to enjoy that, brother James. We want to welcome you, your lovely lady, her beautiful wife here. Today. I would like to speak for us both. Uh, that's why I was not a big talker. I was give with gab. Oh, I, I just like to tell you that you know he says confession sins before men, but you know as early years back I was a scoundrel. Hmm. Many people don't say this because you know he said go to another land. They yeah. want to set you here. Yeah. Because they know your past. Yeah. But I was saved 50 years ago in a small Baptist church. And I attended you know, Baptist churches for a few years, but then I had, I was inspired, I was hungry. I looked in the paper, there wasn't no church open on Tuesday. And I looked, consulted the newspaper, and they were having a 
program at Whitewood Church of God. And so I went to the program. And I went, therefore, and I rededicated again. You know, I wasn't lost. I rededicated again just to be on the safe side. <laughs> and I joined the church within a week. And I was there for numerous years. Uh, not talking about self, but what God allowed me to do. I was children church pastor for years there. I had youth class on Wednesday. I had a class on Sunday school on Sunday. I got the sanctuary twice, uh, once a week. And I was very proud that God allowed me to do those jobs. And from there, uh, <coughs> excuse me, moved to uh, New Hanover County, so therefore that took me away from the church. And I attended a, a few different churches down in New Hanover County, but it, you know, for some reason, I wasn't, uh, somehow or another, we wasn't fitting together. And one guess one reason it wasn't Pentecost. And then from that, I went to, uh, Belinda and I went to uh, Ice Praise. We went there for a good while. And, you know, we, like Brother said here, you know, we did whatever the church needed taken care of. And they gave us the opportunity, you know, to vacuum and take care of the sanctuary once a week. And we begged our way into getting to do it twice a week, so we were in full charge of it, and we loved it, you know. But uh, and we did door greeters and uh, usher. But some three years ago, uh, I went to Brunswick Bible Institute, and I was certified evangelist. In which, you know, I do a lot of paper ministry, and I evangelize. We evangelize everywhere we go. We went out to eat yesterday. That gave me a big opportunity. Got to evangelize to the manager, the waitress, and whoever came in contact with. You know, we have no shame in God. Mm -hmm. We're proud to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're just thankful that we're saved. And most of all now, we're thankful that God directed us to Beach Assembly of God because we love it here. We appreciate all you people. You have all been an inspiration to us. You all have all accepted us with open arms as Judas received the prodigal son. Mm -hmm. You know how we all should be. Mm -hmm. And we always have smiles and we always say hello. You mm -hmm. know, which sometimes there is people in the world that doesn't say hello every time. But you know, we look over here. But we're thankful. We're thankful to be here in this class today also to become official Remember how we've been proclaiming the church to others ever since we've been, we came the first day and inviting people to come. But we couldn't say, well, I'm a member, you know, but we said, we love it here. You would love it here. God is alive. Jesus loves you. We need you to be here. So I'll leave it at that. You know, we're thankful and uh, we appreciate you all and we appreciate your warm acceptance of us. Yes, sir. Um, I was raised uh, Episcopalian and uh, cultist on my mother's side, and I am a uh, repent occultist. Uh, I found the love and light of Jesus Christ uh, last year uh, with Pastor Chase and the Beach Assembly of God. Uh, I've given up the uh, the ways of darkness and in search of uh, light and, and Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay. Well, that's very good. Thank you you heard him. Came out of the occult, he's making his way. At Beach Assembly, we practice great patience. And some of us, uh, Ethan's had come out of darkness, and uh, so we work with him. We pray for him. Uh, I watch over him. I have to say that when I give him instructions, he follows them. When I ask him to do something, he does it. And uh, we're working with him. So all of us are a work in progress. <laughs> right? There are none of us who have quite arrived. All of us have different areas. So pray for him. He, he, he wants you to pray for him. He accepts prayers. Oh, you got my stuff down there. I'm, I'm looking and looking and looking. Yeah. And that silver. Okay. I'm looking and looking and looking. And it's down over there with his things. Okay. So is this a package that stays here? 
No, you can you no, can take it. But every just week. bring it every week. Okay. Just bring it with Ian out of a prayer book. What was your name? Ian. Ian. How do you spell it? Ian. I A N. Okay. Ian. Um. Like I mentioned to you, some of our folks are out of town in ministry today. We have and, five that are out. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, thank you for being here. Now, normally, when I say normally, uh, this class is is three. We are quite. We require. Uh, three sessions of this class, but it takes more than that to do it because we're already on our second class. But last week was profitable. I think I told them in their message from me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. you didn't get one, but I'll add you on. Excellent. And I'll have to add you, dear folks, on. Be glad to. But they already know all this. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm just saying that. Last week was important because we learned a little bit about each other. Uh, and it helps you to connect when you look around the congregation and you see those who are in your class. It gives you a, uh, a connecting point. Yeah, and we all come does. from such various differing backgrounds here at Beaches and with God. I mean to tell you, we have, uh, we have everything... Uh, and the Lord sends us people because we receive them. We welcome them. Uh, we love them. And uh, we are all part of a great body of Christ. I'm going to talk to you three, very briefly this morning about why uh, you should join the church. And uh, if yeah. you have if somebody did not get a book? No, ma'am. Okay. She came in late. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Right here is what he's going to be taking from, and then we're switching over here okay. in a little bit. And I mentioned the blue Ian, you, have, you have one, okay? Do you both want one? If you do, I'll be happy to give two. Make sure that each one have one. Yeah, Just because I made enough for, for each one to have one. Please bring all these things every week, okay? Thank you, Jane. Oh, whoops, I'm sorry. Whatever I think of... of uh, joining the church, I always think of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where it says you are members one of another. And uh, let me read to you out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And he begins that chapter by teaching on the gifts of the Spirit. Spirit. And then he goes on to say, whereas the body is one and hath many members, so we are a body that has many members. Each member has a different assignment from God and a different purpose from God. Paul, Paul goes on to teach where what? Uh, because I'm not the eye or because I'm not the ear or I'm not the hand. About maybe preferred body ministries because they're obvious, they're seen. And, uh, but all of us are a part of a body. We're one body. Every part of your body is absolutely essential and necessary. Even the weaker members are necessary. Weaker members may be those who are just coming into Christ and they're learning. They're on the milk of the word and they're learning. They're growing and they're receiving. And sometimes weaker members are uh, uh, perhaps those who, even though they have been around uh, for a while, uh, have not necessarily developed their uh, calling, their gift, their ministry. And as you exercise what God has given you to become, you become stronger and you grow in whatever place that you are called. And um, I, the Bible, let me just read to you what the Bible says, and that way you can understand what I am saying. It's in 1 Corinthians 12, 12. Whereas the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, whether we have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. 
If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not the body, is it not therefore of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where were the smelling? But now God has set in members, every one of them, in the body as it pleased him. The church, not just Beach Assembly of God, but the church. All the redeemed, blood-washed, born again, we are one body. Mm -hmm. We are members of one body another that is all of our lives are affected by other parts of the body and the body cannot say well i don't have any need of this member and the member can't say i don't have any need of this body we all need each other and so you are part of a body because you're a christian you are a member the word member is used because you are a christian you're a member of that body. So we're all part of the great family of God, the great uh, Christian believers. We're all brothers and sisters, one in Christ with our different gifts, uh, different callings, different places, different maybe uh, particular interests that are given to uh, each of us. And while we're all different with maybe a different gift, a different calling, a different place, uh, uh, because we we may be one of a hand or a foot or an eye or whatever we are, we still need the other ones. Uh, my hand and my feet are sure going to need my eyes. And my eyes can't go anywhere. My hands and feet don't take them. We all need each other. Then there is a local body. You know, the Apostle Paul said, forsaking not yourselves, assembling together. We assemble together. When we assemble together, we are a local body that has been drawn by the Spirit of God first to what we believe. We know who we are and what we believe. Second, for the purpose of worship and praise. I know you can worship and praise in your automobile because we all do. <laughs> I know you can worship and praise at home because we all do. But when we come together Corporately, it's many members coming into one body. And dynamics happen that are a little different from when you're in your car Amen. going mm -hmm. down the highway. Mm -hmm. So we need both corporate and we need both individual gifting. So we need it all under one. So when you come to join a body of believers, a local church, uh, Beach Assembly of God is a local church that has been raised up in this county. It was begun about 25 years ago. It started in a little storefront building 25 years ago. And through the years, God has drawn people from, my goodness, from New York, uh, from uh, the New England states. He's drawn people from, uh, a lot of people from the Virginia, New York. He just drew them here. Uh, we have a base of people, but it's probably more from coming someplace else and then we're born here. But no matter where you go in this county, you're going to find that dynamic. Mm -hmm. uh, that One of the first questions you'll ask somebody if you live here, well, where are you from? Mm -hmm. <laughs> where are you from? Mm -hmm. uh, and occasionally you'll get a North Carolina and sometimes you'll even get up. Well, I was born and raised here in Brunswick County. Uh, but God raised our church up to draw people from many, many areas and many, many places. And so we have exercised intentionally a warm and friendly welcome. We want people to belong. We want people to know that they're wanted. And so when you begin, you come and you watch and you listen and you, and you start feeling God knitting you to that body. It may take some time. For some people, it's walking through the door. We've had some people. We've had some people riding down the road to around, come back to our church and never left. They were going to church somewhere and, and were just drawn here. But there needs to be a what I will call an assimilating time. 
and in our church, we, we, we asked you to be, uh, to be a part of our church for at least three months. That way you, f you get to sense, you get to do uh, some evaluating. Uh, one church, any ch one service, any church you might go to and you say, boy, you can't get no better than this. Mm -hmm. But one about two, three months down the road, we may all be pulling mm. all we can do to get our bootstraps on mm. to get up the hill. But you have to be a part of all of that. You have to be a part of the mountains of glory. You have to be a part of, of those Sundays where you come in and you say, oh, Lord, do something. Help quick. We, we need something now. And I'm just saying that, that as you come, you feel yourself united and drawn to the body. And so we are members. Now that word members elevates. It, it elevates in that it means I choose to belong. Mm -hmm. I choose to be a part of. Uh, I'm moving from here to observe. I'm moving from here to uh, learn, uh, to willingly on my own, uh, volitionally become a part of this body. I know that in many churches, when you go and get saved, immediately they take you into church membership. I don't have any, I don't have any qualms or, 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 or discussion with that. I just simply say here, because we are Pentecostals. Uh, we, we, we believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with tongues. And that is different than most churches you walk in that are, of an evangelical nature, so we want you to we want you to we want you to sit and enjoy and observe. But there comes a place you need to take on responsibility. There comes a place you say, "I need to be a part." There comes a place say, "I'm letting you know that I'm ready to step up and to be a part." And so this is what part of becoming a member is. Now, when you go ahead, I have a question. Only. Can somebody explain to me what the term being saved means? That means if you're, if you're looking for a, uh, a biblical definition, John chapter 3, Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. And it's good that you asked that question because that is the first prerequisite of membership. You must be born again. I tell this story often. We had a couple that started to our church that just, man, they just fit like a hand in a glove. You know, they uh, they enjoyed the service immensely and and were faithful in giving and in attendance and uh, and I was just really pleased that they're you know the, they're what they were coming and being a part. Uh, and so I announced a church membership. And along with some others, they were coming. And they asked me for, they said, Pastor, could we come in and talk to you before we take the class? And I said, certainly. And so they came in and I said, how can I help you? You know, I thought maybe there was an area of doctrine I needed to, to discuss with them. I thought maybe there was an area of understanding. Because this is different when you, when you walk in here and you come from a, another background like, Catholic, we have lots of Catholics yeah. in our church now, just lots of them that come, and they have what you use, saved, they have become born again, and by that they have accepted the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior. They realize that they are not saved by works, that is good deeds that we can do, or good things to do that we do, but by faith, receiving the atonement, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask him to become our personal Savior. And the Spirit bears witness with us, right? Mm -hmm. It says, Abba, Father. Now, that happens many ways. It does. I've seen people get saved riding down the road, talking to the Lord, saying, Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do, but please help me. He understands what you're saying. You may not have all the biblical terms, you may not have, you might not say, oh, I need to be redeemed, or you might not say, I need to be justice, justified, but you might just say, Lord, I, I want to be a part. I want to, I want to love you. I want to serve you. And so salvation can occur uh, wherever 
you ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart and be your personal Savior. Anyway, this couple I was telling you about, uh, I, I said, how can I help you to become a member? And I wasn't prepared for their answer. Mm -hmm. They said, we are not saved. Mm -hmm. We need to get saved before we can become a member. Now, there were people that were, that were gracious in their actions, people that were giving, people that were just doing what they knew to do, but they had never accepted the Lord as their Savior. So sitting right where you were to are sitting, just like y'all are sitting, I led them to the Lord Jesus. Now, she was very easy. She was like a fruit. You know when you put your hand under a, a blackberry? I don't know if you've ever picked blackberries or, mm -hmm. or those mm -hmm. kind of things. When you, grapes will do it too. When they're really at their ripest place, you put your hands under and they'll just fall right. Mm -hmm. They'll just, they'll just, fly. oh, she just, she just embraced it. She just, she, she had a faith to just reach down and lay a hold of it. Now he's watching all this. He said, now, Pastor, my wife and I have always done things together. And so I want to do this too. I want to do this too. But you see, his mind was, was a mind that was analytical. It, you know, it was a mind that this had to follow this and that had to follow that. And it was, and so I had to, con I had to convince him. Mm -hmm. See, he wanted to do something. He was wanting, wanting to find himself, well, you need to give me $1,500. He wrote a check. And see, he, he wanted to do something. He wanted to do something. And I, and I had to explain to him, you have to receive. You have to receive. I remember a man in our church in, in uh, Tennessee, a wonderful man, Nathan Johnson. A very spiritual wife. Oh, my goodness, a prayer warrior, a woman of faith. She prayed for years for him to get saved. And so Nathan comes and he says, I have been saved, Pastor. And so I said, you believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he's died for your sins, and you ask him to come in your heart, and you receive him. He said, well, well, isn't there more to it? <laughs> isn't there something else you do? So first we start with believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, asking him in, to come into our heart, to be our Lord and Savior, to forgive us of our sins. And when you have done that, you have done, you have done that, uh, then you have done what? It is the believing that he did this for us. Because some of us, have, as he pointed out, have been <laughs> pretty rough <laughs> and wrong. And, I mean, you take Ian, he's coming out of total darkness. He's coming out of total darkness. He's got life-changing th things that are going on in him that are just... Uh, revolutionary, just revolutionary to him. It just, just, just a whole different world. But we all come the same way. And yeah. saved in being born again, accepting Christ. I'm trying to think. Conversion. To me, they're all synonymous terms. Okay. So when you, so I don't know if that's what you were asking. Yes. Yeah, yes. Jesus said to Nicodemus, "You must be born again." But you, we will, you will hear the word, we were converted. That means that we accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so we do it because we are, we, are, we are spirit people. We're born of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And we're all spirit. We're all brothers and sisters. Yeah. We right. are, this thing is deeper than, than just a scratch on the back. Let me read her this scripture here that I, um, when she asked a question. I love it. So this is why we do Ephesians. this. Ephesians. All of us together can receive and learn how to help each other. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith. It's God's grace. We're saved through our faith in him. That not of yourselves. It's nothing to do with you. It's all the work of, of God. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's a great scripture. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I think that's good scripture. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interchangeable. What when I say interchangeable? Yeah. Jesus Synonymous. called it born again. 
but we call it saved sometime. I won't ever forget, I was doing some personal evangelism and I asked somebody, are you saved? And they said, saved? They thought of it in context of you saving something. Yeah. They, they're mine. See, they're mine. When you have people that come into our church, uh, probably more so it, than any church in this county or any church you may come into, we have so many that come from different places to hear. That's why we do this. This is why we do this. And I want to tell you, I was blown away when they told me well, we're not saved. Mm -hmm. And so I prayed with them. They received the Lord. I said, we can fix that right now. Mm -hmm. I said, that's why you haven't joined the church. I can. We can take care of this right now. Believe with me right mm -hmm. now that Jesus is your Savior. And we did. And so once we get saved, we're in the larger body of Christ, the larger family. Uh, there may be a different denominational door that we walk in or walk through. But if you have truly been washed in the blood of Jesus and believed for forgiveness of sin, you're my brother. You're, mm -hmm. you're, my, you're my sister, and we, we labor together. Then we come into a closer setting for training, for teaching, for worshiping, for growing. Uh, when you become a member. Now, we don't treat anybody any different. I've probably got... This morning, if there's 200 people sitting out there, uh, I probably got, wow, half of them are not members of our church. That they're, They love to come, uh, but they just haven't got to that place. They want to make that commitment. See, membership means commitment. Right. See, that's, that's really what it means. It means I'm stepping up. It means I'm making myself available. It means I feel I feel that I want to be financially supportive. I feel I want to be I want to be prayerfully supportive. I want to be supportive of what the church is em, embracing. Like this morning, you're going to hear Phyllis Rose, a missionary to Peru. Uh, we embrace her. We know what her gift is. Uh, this morning, we're going to be embracing Tom and Ellen Freeman, who have been our our church uh, elders. Uh, and they're over our seniors ministry. They're having a 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And so this morning we're going to give them a card. We're going to embrace them. We're going to say thank you, Tom and Ellen. We love you. And, and we're going to, we have Camelia James who's going to be going to Montana with Youth with a Mission to, uh, so she can enhance her teaching skills, teaching English, so she can go overseas as an English teacher. You put you want to go overseas as a missionary, you may not get there. Mm. But if you put you want to go to teach English and you go and build relationships, you do the work of a missionary. So this morning, as a body, even if you're not a member, you're embracing that because we're all going to support them with prayers. We're all going to listen to them. We're all going to pray for them. But when you become a member, you're saying, I'm willing, I'm willing to make myself available. I'm willing to be uh, accountable. You know, that's a very important word. We need to be accountable to one another. Uh, we, we need to pray for one another. We need to love one another. So that's one of the great things about the church is you have, you have a place of accountability. And, if, and if, as your pastor, I see some word that Satan has set a trap for you. I have a responsibility to come to you and say, uh, you know, I n know that you love God and I know your heart is pure and I know your spirit is right. But I see the enemy trying to create a snare, a trap for you. You have a pastor to watch for your soul. Not only that, you have some wonderful elders here that will watch for your soul. Not only that, you have some praying people. You become a part of that. You become you you join. You become a member. You join. Uh, you have these papers. You can yeah. you can look at these. You can read these. You can search out the. Uh, it's there for you. Uh, it's got the uh, conditions for for membership there. And it I says think, here in number three, you must be born again. So right. So we were, we're going we're Jesus. going over that. And ever since I had that couple, I always go over that. <laughs> I don't because some people just they're just good people. You love them, and uh, 
You may never have asked them, have you personally accepted Jesus as Can your I Savior? comment on that too? On yes, uh, point number three, you must be born again with the evidence of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, having received or seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We are a Pentecostal church. And um, so uh, every service we will pray with you if you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So, I And you'll, you'll see it manifested in yeah, our church. Absolutely. You'll see it. Absolutely. You'll see it. Absolutely. Uh, I think of your son. I pray for him almost continually. He has won a spot in my heart because I believe he has a calling that is deeper. Yeah. I believe his first calling is a parent. I really feel a burden, sense it in him as a father, as a man. The right in the Bible says if we don't take care of our own house, and he has that in him. He has that in him. And I see him growing, and I see him so responsive to the Holy Spirit. I mean, he just has a sensitivity. And you see all this in our services. Mm -hmm. We are, when we say we're Pentecostals, we're people of the Spirit. We want the Holy Spirit to move. We want the Holy Spirit. We, today, we, we, have, we have a uh, outline of some things that we need to do in the service today. Uh, but I want to tell you, if the wind starts blowing just right, all this just gets turned over. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the way we feel about it. Can I add one thing? Sir? Can I add one thing? Sure. I can relate to wanting to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I sort of went about it the wrong way. For six months, I devoted myself to 45 minutes locked into a bedroom with no gospel praise and worship and I prayed and I did everything I could possibly do. I even tried to speak in tongues but I fouled up every way it was. Yeah. I sang in the choir and got a singer I covered up all the rest of the <laughs> So therefore I was singing in the choir. Everyone knows that God took over the service. The Holy Ghost service. There were six of us left in the choir. He looked at me and said keep singing. Yeah. I've always been kind of a leader. You know? And then kept singing but suddenly I get these cold chills running all over me then and something come in my head said step up into that pew walk on the back of these pews <laughs> oh, my oh, oh, oh. I did not do that I said I may fall and break my leg that's so what I, I want to say <laughs> I ran hard as I could run around the pulpit and one of the deacons met me there what do you want I told him he prayed with me and I've had it ever since so. that's the key question yeah. He went past the manifestation yes. to get to what you wanted. Yes. Boy, that is good. Yeah. We don't we don't cram things down people's throat. We let them experience them. We give them the word of God. We encourage them. But we believe that every believer is entitled to and can receive the Holy Spirit. But we are not we're we want you to be led, not somebody making you do anything. We don't do that. And sometimes, like he said, unusual manifestations happen. And out of those manifestations sometimes comes miracles of reconciliation, miracles of forgiveness, miracles of the baptism. Honey. We might need to cover that. I don't know that everybody's been baptized If you have water, not been baptized been. by water, by, by immersion, the Word of God says repent to be baptized. Yeah. You'll hear us say the Word of God says. That's the final authority for us when it says the Word of God says. And the word of God says, repent and be baptized. And then we're going to cover the statement of faith. Probably we won't get to it till next week. And um, so just be prepared. Some of them already have the assignments. Three of them do. But I'll get to the rest of you. Okay. Can I just say one thing? Our faith is, our faith operates on this nation. God doesn't have to go over there and put his hand on this person. Yes. Our faith is our faith is strong. Our faith says, God, just say the word. Yeah, speak the word. That's on how it. we operate. Yes. Just, just will it. Yes. And there are times that we lay hands on people True. because of biblical instructions yes. to do so. These signs shall follow them that believe they shall lay hands on the sick. But I tell you there's times we pray for people from here that may be wherever in the world that right. they are. And we expect mm -hmm. by faith 
to have a, res a response. Do you want? And the last one here, and the support of the church with your time, talent, and resources. I'm always looking for women to help. <laughs> help me. <laughs> so, um, you know, there, there will be a place in the church where you feel that is your, your slot and your time, your talent, and resources, and including tithe and income, and to live in harmony with other members, a promise to seek God's glory in all things. And that just about covers all of that right there, I think. Right. Oh, by the way, a lot of people don't know this, but we do accept 14 years of age as a junior member. Mm -hmm. I hear more That's people right. say, yeah. never heard of that. Yeah. Please, if you're talking to a young person and they're 14, they can become a junior member, and then when they're 18, they go into the membership automatically, okay? Mm -hmm. That's one thing I hear commented about a lot. Well, we just wanted to let you know that we welcome, that we receive. Uh, we do accept membership transfers, and um, but we still ask that folks come to the class because churches are totally different. Uh, you could go to this Assembly of God and then go to another one down the road. You'll hear the same doctrine, but it will have its own different flavor. I'll mm -hmm. call it our own different personality or its own... Uh, different makeup. Uh, Brother Brooks there has had the privilege of, um, of setting under one of the national leaders of our Assemblies of God Fellowship. A wonderful, wonderful man. Great, great pastor, Brother Ron McManus. Uh, and then there's other churches that may have just been started or may just have um, uh, Don't have hundreds of people. He's used to letting hundreds of people out of the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, no more than that to go. But, I, but if you've never got to meet Brother Brooks, get him to tell you about the old lady across the street from the church that would wave at him every Sunday That's good. That's when, he good. Would, when he would leave the church. Very good. It's an amazing, amazing story. And all of us have our amazing stories. We all do. All of us have had a grace and a love for the Lord Jesus. Well, we're going we're gonna to stop at this juncture, and we're going to pray. We have several needs for our church today. I want you to join with me in prayer about. And then that will give you a, a couple of moments when you get out to be able to uh, go to the powder room or, uh, or the restroom or just give you a few minutes to get ready for our service. Uh, first today, there's a lady in our church. Her name is Donna Hank. Uh, help me, honey. Haney. Donna Haney. Uh, Donna, Donna has a small business, and she's always, uh, some of you have heard me tell, she always would take our Sunday bulletins to her shop, and she would pass out those bulletins as an invitation to our church. This is her second battle with cancer. She's had a tremendous battle getting medical resources for this second go around. So if you would just remember Donna Haney. Uh, Jimmy Carlisle, Ray Carlisle has served as a board member here at our church and he and Miss Libby and um, his brother Jimmy has been diagnosed with cancer. Some of you Wednesday night may have heard me go over some of these names uh, but his name is Jimmy Carlisle. He is not saved. We need to pray for his salvation. Yes, we want to pray for his healing. But the first thing we need to pray for is for him to uh, touch on a great family, a great, wonderful mother, a great, wonderful father. Uh, but he's just hardened his heart through disappointments or whatever. And so let's pray that he will be converted. Uh, next is Donnie Rouse. Uh, Donnie used to sit on the back. Uh, from his military experience, he was exposed to some things that have really uh, caused him health issues most of his life. Uh, but they're thinking about putting him into a uh, nursing rehab care facility. Uh, so please pray for him. Uh, you'll hear us mention Frank Davidson. You won't see him. Frank's had a recovery with seizures that has taken over a year left him debilitated and recovering. Wonderful man, uh, but very sad. 
Father, we pray for our services today. We pray for liberty in the spirit. Yes, Jesus. We pray for Thank anointing you, upon our praise Amen. team today of joy and of strength. We pray that everyone that comes in through our doors will feel the anointing and the drawing to the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Above all things, Jesus, we would that men would be saved. I pray for a liberty and unction today as I preach, Lord, that you will help me. I pray, Father, for our other class members that are on assignment, God, in different areas of the country, some in Florida, the Lord, some in Virginia, some in, in Alabama, doing different works of ministry. Yes. I pray for your blessings. We are there, our body, Jesus. There are our hands and our arms and our legs in those places of ministry. I pray for them in Jesus' name. And we look to you and thank you. Amen. 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 For next week, those that have your assignments, they're the same. And I will, I'm looking at Danielle, but she doesn't have one. No. Nope. But I'm going to give her one. <laughs> That's okay. So I'll be assigning, uh, we do well to get through six of our statement of faith, five or six. So I will give, I will contact three more individuals to do four, five, and six. So be expecting to hear What she's going to ask you to do is read a scripture yeah. that no, is valuable to what well, we're teaching they already and know it's mm -hmm. the words in blue they already yes. know i communicated mm -hmm. with them so um if i see there's a scripture i failed to print in here i'll let you know okay i apologize for being late today i had to do something that needed to go in the bulletin but i will try not to be late next week we'll try to start at 9 31. <laughs> Pardon? Can you take your own scripture? No, I have scriptures that we're going to go through our um, statement of faith. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, sure. And it's in your booklet. Okay. So if I contact you, it'll be the blue scriptures okay. that are in there. Okay. Let me ask you one thing. Yes, sir. When you say let's pray, I don't like to be out of turn, but I'm accustomed. You know, I was in the Baptist church, and I was preacher praying only, and I felt like, you know, I was praying only since then. But when I went to the Pentecostal church, and they say, Let's pray. Everybody pray. I'm used to hearing rumble. <laughs> I'm used to a rumble I myself. Always pray. Yes, sir. Yeah, I didn't want to feel out of turn. Yeah, we right. do that sometimes. We, I will say this prayer as a congregation. Every one of you lifting up your voice yes. in prayer. Yes. Sometimes we will be led by an individual. Sometimes several individuals will ask different people to come up and pray over. Maybe something we know they're particularly interested in, concerned about, that's on their heart. Like if I wanted to have somebody pray for souls, I'd say, Brother James, you need to come up here and pray for a spirit of evangelism in our church today. And you would lead us. And I'd say to the folks, I'd join him. Join him. Pray with him. So we do it different ways. There we go. I'll try to let people know so they can follow. So they can be a part. Be comfortable. Bless you folks. Thank you.